Flow Resource. Okay. Um, thanks for having me. Um, I'm Alexander, and I'll be talking about uh, joint work with Jake Master on co and contra categories. And I'll start off by saying this is very preliminary work. I think a lot of the stuff hasn't been checked. It's a bit speculative a lot. Um, but uh, uh, I was asked to give a talk anyway, and uh, I hope you have some uh, interesting uh, comments. Um, okay, so what is co and con what are co and contra categories? Um, well, it arises from this philosophy that category theory um, and, and is about compositions, uh, compositionality. And um, uh, so the, that might be just category theory or more complicated gadgets like multi categories or opera ads or things in this vein. Um, and somebody might fantasize that. Just as category theory abstracts function composition, um, there might be a dual theory about decomposing things. Decomposing things is very natural, um, so we would like to have a mathematical framework for that. And there are already several frameworks in the literature. Um, I'll say a little bit about that later, but uh, today I want to talk to you about a specific version of that. Um, all right, so let's dive into the definition. Um, so I start with a symmetric monodal category V, an enriching category. And then we say a V enriched co category C, in the sense of J, is a V up enriched co uh, v, v up enriched category, um, where we take the same monoidal product. I can say that here. So concretely, it means we have a set of objects. Um, just like in the normal case, op C. And for any A and B in op C, a B object we'll call num A B. Something like not hum. Or, uh, and for any A, B, and C, a decomposition V map, F and B. Um, so it goes from num A B to num A C tensor num C B. Okay? And we have a co unit map going the other way, so it goes to I. And uh, there's some co-unit law I'm going to write down. And then the following diagram has to commute. So um, right, let, me, let me actually finish this diagram. Um, so it, it says that sort of two different ways of decomposing uh, are the same. So if I first decompose on C, so this is C, and this is B, this is B, and this is C, then these decompositions have to be the same. Um, now this condition, it's an interesting condition. Um, it doesn't hold for all notions or all informal conceptions of decomposition. Um, for us, it will, it's, it's wide enough to include a lot of decompositions, but I'll just start off by saying that. Um, so this is a co-category uh, in the sense of date. Um, but what I'm going to talk about today is a particular version of this, which is called, which is a contra, which I call, we call contra categories. Um, all right. So I'll do a lot of editing. Um, Um, let uh, V I O, the enriching cat, sorry, tensor, the enriching category be um, set uh, zero and co product. So this disjoint union. Uh, I won't write that this joint, I'll just write like this. Um, okay, and a contra category. Um, is a B op, uh, you know, so I'd say set op zero distributed union and rich category. Okay. Um, all right. So let's let's see. 
this doesn't change. Here we have a disjoint union. And um, yeah, since we're in set, so think about this. If I have an element and fly the decomposition operator, I actually have to make a choice. So do I go left or do I go right? Um, so the way to think about this is these contra-categories encode uh, there are a particular kind of co-category theory, so in a particular kind of way where decomposition is important to make sense. And in this case, it is a directed obstruction. So you should think of this as sort of the, the negation of a morphism or an entailment. There is, a, there, is an, there is a witness that A does not imply B, that there is no map from A to B. And if we have that, then this says, well, for any C, suppose I want to break it up, right? So I would have um, so this question B. Um, and you could ask, is there a factorization like this? Um, and this choice says, uh, makes a choice for which one to obstruct. So it's a minimal directed obstruction. All right. So We'll call the elements, um, yeah, they're minimal directed obstructions. So the co-unit law here, sorry, kind of quite interesting, uh, because this is zero. So that means that non-AA uh, is always empty. I mean, zero, sorry, did I say zero here? Uh, yeah, so by zero in uh, set, of course, we mean empty set. So, uh, yeah, so that's already quite interesting. Um, then the co-associativity, um, it sort of imposes a condition on these choices that you make, or that are made by the minimal obstruction, direct obstruction, the, the witness. Um, so uh, it says, suppose I choose, I make a choice here, for instance, for the, for A to C, um, and then I apply here and I end up in, uh, let's say, B, C. Then here, if I make these choices, I have to choose A, B, and then also B, C to end up in the same place. Um, so, I won't go too much into it, but it's kind of a, interesting to, to look at what are the possible choices and what does this diagram, how does it constrain those choices? Um, so there's sort of a global coherence on choices you can make. And we'll see later, the so perspective is that the elements of these num sets are very much like ultra filters. Um, so they have a sort of model thread um, in, the, in the logical sense of model theory um, uh, nature to them. Okay, um, let me see, I think. Um, so small disclaimer or small observation is, uh, so set is confusion closed, or at least monodal closed, and there's a whole theory about how to enrich in a monodal closed category. Um, since we're working in the opposite category, it's no longer monodal closed, um, and that presents difficulties. So initially, we had the idea of just applying Kelly's uh, rich category theory, but very quickly it turned out that, that you can't just apply that. But a lot of the notions still make sense, but they're sort of bizarro, a little weird. Yeah? Do you know any examples of counter categories? Do I know any examples of counter categories? Yes, well, we'll get there. Okay. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, um, yeah. Um, Okay, so I think that's that's good. Um, all right, we're we're gonna write down a bunch of very simple uh, kind of examples first, and but I hope you bear with me. Investigate a new uh, kind of mathematical object. It's always a 
important to start with examples, and the best examples to start with are the uh, trivial, the simplest or trivial ones. Right, so let be a set, um, then there is a uh, discrete co-contra category, discrete uh, contra cat um, with objects S and all non sets uh, empty. All right, fair enough. Um, all right, so in regular cat category thing, uh, theory, we know that I mean, there's sort of a game we can play where you look at categories under constraints and look at what you get. So if you have a, an example would be a one object category. So uh, a one object category in, is a monoid. So, all right, so who wants to get what, guess what a contra monoid is? Yeah. Right. There's a unique one, and it's this guy. And um, it turns out to be the terminal uh, contra category. So I'll tell you that already. I haven't defined what functors are, contra functors are, but terminal. In, uh, okay, cool. Um, all right. Um, now, before we get to the next examples, I want to uh, give a, uh, even, even, it's always good to, to start with the most tautological or the most trivial examples. Um, so in category theory, we know that truth and rich categories are free orders. So truth and rich categories are those categories that have uh, equivalently um, uh, at least one morphism. But in the contra category theory, there's a little subtlety yeah, this one. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so we look at up. Um, sorry. Okay. And rich categories. All right. So example. So these are. Um, so these we are called as veridical whatever, law of geometric spaces. You can also think in the classical case, they're just Boolean metric, law of geometric spaces. So what does it mean? I have an, an, a uh, set, so it's a pair, it is a pair L of a set L and a relation of incomparability. Sometimes they're also already known in the literature as incomparabilities. So what are the rules? Well, it's quite simple, really. Um, you never have uh, a, a is never incomparable to itself for any A. And uh, if A is incomparable to C, then for any, any B, we have um, A, B, or B, C. Okay. Um, now, you would want this, this theory, to make a uh, good theory would be that this is equal to a contra pre order. So, contra pre order. Um, is a contra category with at most um, sorry, at most one element the nonsense in the nonsense. Okay, um, and they're almost the same, but there is a subtlety knife. Would be missed in not telling you. Um, in the contra, uh, uh, in the contra category thing theory, we always have to make a choice between them. That's not a contra category there. That's a co-category. Yeah. 
That one's not a contra category because it's not a disjoint word. Yes, so that's what I'm saying. So this is not a contra category. Right. It's a, no, it's a omega. Oh, okay. oh, sorry. So I should say omega is truth values, right? So classically, classically, this is just top and bottom. Or bottom top. Um, yeah. So this is yeah. So in the contra case, I have to make the choice between them. And um, it's not the case that it's literally XOR, because I could, I could make a choice here, but then this could still be inhabited. So it behaves still like an OR, um, but, but there's like an extra bit of data that uh, is not accounted for in just these veridical logger spaces and comparabilities. Um, of course, if you just allow for maybe some choices, so a choice maybe, then probably they cannot be lifted. Um, I should think more about this, but. All right, I want to point out this subtlety. Um, so similarly, we have, we can consider uh, co-groupoids, where num a, b um, is isomorphic to num b, a. Um, and uh, here we have a similar thing where uh, the where we have all to make all these choices that's a little hard but I can give you a more simpler example um, uh, real quick yeah um, the analogous condition for cat on categories if you demand a hum a b is isomorphic to hum b a yeah that's not sufficient to show it's a group void um, so like relations comes to mind uh, but there's some other conditions uh -huh. you can put in. That. OK, well, that's very good. Thank you for that comment. Uh, so I pointed out that uh, this is not a strong enough condition for a group void. Um, and you need probably some. Well, maybe it is here. I don't know. No, no, no. I, I haven't thought about it. So some compatibility, probably? Uh, I, I think. All right. OK, some plus compatibility. <laughs> um, all right. But the, the example I'm really thinking of, uh, so it, it can be quite hard to give actual examples. And we'll, we'll see like a real non-trivial example later. But um, uh, maybe, maybe I should make these red, because they're not examples of contract categories exactly. But they, yeah, um, is a partness space. A point point partness space. is a pair of a set A and a relation um, not that is unequal. So in partness uh, in A dips A such that never, um, all right, let me, let me write it in logical notation because I found that easier. Um, so never. A, B, um, so it's symmetric, Ooh. and finally the co-condition. So um, A, if A is not equal to C, then A is not going to equal to B, or B is not equal to C. All right. Um, and so if I have a co-groupoid that is also a contributor order, I can. I can squash it down and get this point for a partner space. But the, the contra category, strictly speaking, has this extra choice structure. OK. Um, so these were a couple examples. There's more examples. Um, one very sort of simple example is, uh, so j just to, to point out, um, if you have a log your metric space, you also can quotient down to get these vertical log your spaces. So if they have non-zero distance, it's true. If they have zero distance, it's false. Uh, yes. Um, or maybe maybe there's not. But okay. Can I <laughs> yeah. Clarify something. So you, um, you were saying contra vertical log of your metric spaces are not contra categories in general. Um, so if you're enriching, if you have a 
scourging over A, your functor from A to B, you should be able to turn that in your issue A category from B category. Mm -hmm. What's going on here? There should be a functor from, this is the functor from it's the other way. Was the op makes the functor go the other no, way? No, no, it is it. Um, there's a map from set op to this thing. It's gonna it doesn't get right. This thing to set. So given the contra category, you should get a vertical. Right, okay. So off in this, okay. Yeah. Um, Pre-order. Okay, so let's start with pre-order. Um, there is a canonical, um, uh, hold on, sorry, so I called this a, uh, yeah, so I'll just call it omega off enriched. Category um, uh, C star, where objects of C is just objects C star and the num um, uh, from A to sorry, the num from A to B is empty if upon A B not empty and the num. All right, maybe I'm just going to say this. It's a pre-order because I haven't actually checked the other case. Um, oh. We don't need all this generality. So now I'm if it's going to be crazy and point if um, B is empty. All right, so it's like literally you just take the complement. Um, Okay, it's a very simple case. Um, but we really want to be um, look at the um, uh, sort of not trivial example now. Um, and I've said a little bit before that uh, you should think of this as, uh, you should think of these elements in the num sets as some sort of model theoretic count, uh, obstruction or counter model. Um, and I already mentioned the word ultra filter, so that will be our next example. Um, so I'll just write down an example, and then I'll tell you what to think of this. So let B be a Boolean algebra, and um, now I define the stone dual, the stone dual contra cat. Contra cat as B is defined as the objects are just the same. Oh. But the morphism, oh, sorry, the nom sets, nom um, AB is defined as the homomorphisms in Boolean, cater of Boolean algebras, those Boolean algebra homomorphisms. From B um, over to slice A, oh, A and not B to omega, oh which is just true or false. Okay, so two true facts. Um, all right, so this might look a little intimidating at first. Um, so these are also known as the this is the set of ultra filters uh, on B U such that A is in U and uh, B is not in U. Right? Okay, so uh, a ultra filter is a specific set set. I'll write it down in a moment. Um, so there are two presentations. You can see them as a morphism from the book, from uh, as a certain filtered subs a certain subset of B, and I'll explain how that works. Um, or you can see them as a morphism from a Boolean algebra to the uh, truth values, and then they correspond by checking the pre-image of one. And okay, so what's going on here? Um, if you think about these things logically, and I will return to this, uh, 
a, a logician or proof theorist perhaps, perhaps would think of amorphism in a category um, as in a syntactic category, meaning amorphism is something like an entailment or a proof. And uh, these elements here should obstruct the proof. It doesn't mean the opposite, it doesn't mean some sort of negation, but it's only a negation at the meta level. So it's a, a proof theoretic obstruction to a proof from A, to, sorry, a model theoretic obstruction from A to B. So a model which makes A true and B false. And in the case of propositional Boolean, uh, propositional classical logic, uh, models are uh, ultra filters. Yes. Why, why is this contra? Why do you get why do you have to choose? Great, great point. Yeah. Uh, I haven't said that yet. Um, okay. uh, so David asked why, where the decomposition comes from. Um, so intuitively, it means, well, if I have a ultra filter that is true on A um, and false on, or true on A or fa and false on B, right? It's A is in, in U, I, I, I say it's true uh, of A, um, right? If you think of it as a model, um, another way to think of it is as a logician's probability distribution. Uh, I'll, I'll get to this in a moment. Um, but if I, if I give you a C, um, all right, so if I, so let's start. So I have, um, and not B, so I have my ultra filter U, like that, and that's top, like this, right? And I have an inclusion, uh, uh, Yes, there's multiple maps like this, but okay. Um, A and not B and C. And here's B, A and not B and not C. Sorry, I have to write this out. A and not C. filter for any um, C, C is in U, or C is not in U. So this is sort of the ultra filter condition. And depending on what choice I make, so, well not I, depending on what the ultra filter chooses, I get a factorization like this. Or if it made this choice, I get it. Uh, 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 it's of course the other way around. <laughs> um, lamp, excuse me. Right. Um, you can also think of it as the way I like to think about things is. Logic, we have for the sequence calculus, we have the cut rule. So if this doesn't make much sense to you, um, that's fine, you can just ignore it. Um, but in sequence calculus, um, there's the, the, the cut rule A to B and B to C. And then I use cut, and then I get A to C. And this I take the syntactic category of a logic or like a theory, um, then this will correspond with composition in a category. Um, and we can sort of flip the rule. So this is a flip rule. So I want you to read this a little different. So A to C, I get A. So 
these are the negations of A to B, right? So this is the negation. This says, um, or this is these are negations. So instead of saying for every, A, whenever I have A, I have C, this says there is an obstruction which makes A true but C false, and hence obstruct this entailment. Um, if you think in ultra filters, that ultra filter includes A but but doesn't include B, uh, C. Sorry, C is in the complement. So given any B. Um, Given any B, it makes a choice. Oh, is B not in that ultra filter, right? If we have an, if we have an ultra filter, or uh, is it in the ultra filter? So, see, like this, right? Um, so this means B is not in the ultra filter, and this means. Makes a lot of sense to me, but it might not make a lot of sense to you. You didn't get it. Uh, forget about it. Um, okay. All right. Um, I really, uh, yeah, it, it's a little weird, um, but I, I really think that these uh, this ultra folder example is the sort of fundamental example, um, rather than yeah, yeah. Um, all right, let, let us investigate some more formal things. Uh, yeah, and I want to point out, there are, once again, I want to sort of reiterate, and maybe I'll say something more about this, is there are lots of interesting things about decomposed, decomposing systems uh, that this doesn't capture. This is really about a particular kind of world where decomposition occurs, namely directed obstruction, minimal directed obstruction. Um, and there's a whole zoo out there of things that decompose, but that are about different things. And uh, I'd love to investigate this, but I think this is just one trial case, but I, I do think it's a very rich world. And this, yeah, yes? this particular construction of a universal property, like is there a interaction between boolean algebras and I hope so. Um, there's something, and I hope to write it down, and maybe, uh, I, I, I don't know, played around with it so we can't, I haven't fully ironed out all the details, but I'll show you the, the, the idea and hopefully it works. But maybe it's all, it will crash down, we'll, we'll see. Um, all right, so we have contra categories, then you might ask, are there also contra functors? So, um, yes, you can just write down the definition of enriched functor and what do you get? All right, so let's see, let's K, and L, the contra categories, contra cats, and a contra functor is defined. Well, it's defined as a set map on objects, it, uh, just in a as a normal way. Um, F goes from both uh, K to L, um, and it's just uh, a, a map, a map of F from K to op L, that's fine, and a backward map. So F, backward map, um, and I'll write this as F sharp, because why not? Or, or maybe this is hash, hashtag. All right, well, um, uh, A, B. So this goes from num L, so it goes back, f of a, f of b, to non, um, uh, k, a, b. So if you've heard about cool functors, which are kind of popular here, then this is not cool. <laughs> it's, <laughs> yeah, it's almost, or it sort of has the same vibe, but it's not quite that because, uh, yeah, you have F on both sides. Uh, I don't know what to say more about that. Um, yeah, uh, um, all right, plus compatible with comp compatible with just decomposition, with decomposition. All right. And what is a co-functor in this setting? Well, excuse me? So this is just 
co-function, the definition of co-function exists for arbitrary enriched category, right? Mm -hmm. So you have unpacked the definition of function in this category in this setting. Yeah, I, I saw. I, I could also define the notion of co-functor, and maybe that's so. Sorry, uh, 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 Brandon asked if if the if notion of co-functor makes sense. Um, I think you can do that. Maybe it's cool. Uh, this is what falls out if you literally plug in enriched functor. Enriched functor. Are enriched co-functors a thing? Mm -hmm. I know a lot about internal co-functors, but enriched uh, seems harder. Okay. Right. You're right. Um, hmm. Okay. So earlier, um, if you want to think about what is the terminal object, or reset it. So the terminal object is the unique contra monoid, uh, which is kind of cute. So think about it. There's one object, and there's no num set, so the backward map is trivial. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, right. Um, I could talk about contra-natural transformations, but I really want to give you a, 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 a something more, a little more non-trivial. Although this is, I will say, this is a little less checked than the other stuff. Um, so let us get into that. Oh. Okay. Right. So. The category, oh, so I should say we have a contra cat. So this is a one category. Um, and contra graph is defined as uh, having as objects. Right, so objects contra graph. It's just objects of graph, so the objects are just graphs. But the morphisms, the uh, the uh, functors, so functors from n to l. Um, uh, oh, sorry. Well, I mean graph. Sorry, graph morphisms. All right. Let, let me just write a graph morphism. A graph morphism phi from uh, m n to l. So this is again the sharp story. So um, m to l is the, the map from the uh, vertices of m, so a forward map, and maybe you can guess what the the other map is for each for all a b. It's really the same vertices uh, of uh, l. We have. From the edges, so I'm, I'm just writing that, but without the decomposition condition. So this goes from five A, five B, to edge um, A B, and this is in uh, M, and this is in L. All right. Okay, so. Uh, classically, so why do I want to look at those contra categories? Well, um, in the category theory context, they are important because they, are allow, they allow us to define construct free categories. And um, yeah, uh, that's important because we want to have actual examples and hopefully non trivial ones. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. So. So we have a forgetful functor, forgetful functor from contra cat to contra graph, which just basically forgets the, uh, the uh, decomposition operation. All right, and so we would like to construct a free, ad free adjoint. And all right, so we start first by defining uh, pre j. So this is going to be the suppose this is the first our first guess. Um, so for a sorry sorry does it, does a contra graph have an associated contra category? Uh, I'm I'm trying to define that. Uh, oh sorry. The question is sorry, whether okay yeah. Sorry, yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to define um, 
from a graph, and uh, well, let's start with an uh, we'll put this is. So the objects of this should be the objects of M. But then the question is, what is the num set of JM between A and B? And well, what we, 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 what we the fir our first guess um, is we're going to flip the um, definition off the, in the category case. Product over possible um, paths, and then we take this. So, oh, sorry, a plus i and b. Sorry, is it? Oh, oh, this is real. Uh, Brown, this is real. Or, not very real. <laughs> on the camera. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, it is readable. Okay, yeah. so so how do how how to think about this? So our first suggestion. So this is pre. Um, our first suggestion is, well, we we flip it we flip it around. Uh, right. So usually the free code category is a infinite product. Uh, sorry, infinite uh, sum, disjoint sum, over all possible paths. And I, I pick sort of the nerves, and then I take a product here instead of a sum. But now I flipped everything. Oh, sorry, instead of a, yeah, so I should write it like this. So, okay, how does this work? This is saying for any possible path between A and B, hypothetical or putative paths, I pick an obstruction. I pick one of them, uh, an obstruction from M, from the contra graph, uh, that obstructs this path. And I do that for longer and longer paths. Okay, that's a bit funky, and, and you can already see. Um, well, we're going to see these contra categories are have a sort of co-algebraic structure to them. Uh, obviously, the the um, ultra filter maybe hinted towards that already, um, and uh, it's not so easy to construct them, but but you can, and, and they have interesting structure. Um, all right, but. This doesn't have a decomposition operation. And we need to add another condition to make for this to make sense. Okay. So let me write that down. Um, so if we think of it as a function, I'm gonna use this notation. So I'm gonna use the notation i1 to in uh, for a list. And um, in here, we have a function u, and it's going to output a choice, right? It's going to make an, it's going to uh, make a choice of m a. Let me say, just write down what what's happening here, right? I one m. Um, and now, in in the uh, um, axiom for contra categories, there is this co-associativity condition that gives a sort of coherence on the possible choices that you could, that you that the ultra filter of minimal obstruction makes. And we want to um, uh, we want to impose a similar restriction. Uh, yeah, restriction. So we want to say uh, there. Is a natural ordering on initial segments um, I n to I n. Uh, uh, that is the transitive closure closure of the relation. Okay. So what is it? What, what can you guess? Well, all right. If we if we have a situation like this, um, k plus one uh, i n, then this is larger than if I add a little guy in between. So i k um, c i k 
a plus one. Right? So the sort of earlier choices um, have downward ramifications for the later choices. And so the non of the correct, right? okay, I mean, I should say correct. I, I think this works, but I haven't, we haven't really checked all the details, but this is, hopefully it works. Um, should be the U in the, um, the pre, the, or I don't know, naive suggestion uh, such that, such that if you, Yeah, so if hold on, so if we have a initial segment and it's bigger, then um, um, excuse me. Yeah. So is Q two S T. Okay, so that's the one connotation. What does it mean? I'll just explain what this notation really means. Is. choice here, so I have uh, a uh, D um, M D so I have to write this out right, so the thing is um, if you make the choice, makes this choice okay, then it can't it must exclude this, it must make a choice here or here that's what this condition um, is going to imply. Okay. Is it some kind of limit replacing the product or something like that? L um, maybe. <laughs> that could be good. Yeah. I, I don't know. This is like, yeah, there's probably a more clean way to, to write this out and really be sure that it's correct. Um, but it, it, it feels pretty good. <laughs> um, I think I can prove uh, a number of things about it. Um, all right, but maybe before we get into anything is, well, maybe we'd like to, um, we'd like to compute an example. So let's say we have a contragraph three objects. Um, And we choose one. We, it has one obstruction. So I'm gonna I mean, I'm gonna write this as a diode because a diode is a kind of a directed obstruction. Um, now, so let, this is M, right? So this is M. Uh, what about a JM? Well. Letters uh, A, B, C. All right. So let's start with um, uh, A, B. All right. Well, then I apply D, C. So let's say I have a guy in here, D, C. Well, it has to be either. Uh, yeah, it has to make a choice here or there. There are no choices, so uh, uh, it's immediately empty, right? So maybe I didn't emphasize this enough, but 
uh, because it's an infinite product, if there are no choices to make, it must be empty. Um, all right, so, so the J of M doesn't have a anything in it, um, maybe. Okay. So A, B. So the interesting thing is that the free construction is gonna it's gonna lose um, obstructions that it had in the contra category case, and. Here, suppose I have a, uh, if I start in, oh, if I start with an obstruction, putative possible obstruction here, um, well, then I, I, I take, I take, I decompose on along B, B, sorry, I have to make that choice, that's okay. Um, but then I can repeat that, I can also do the Oh, okay, I guess there's also a direction, sorry. So, um, um, yeah, uh, yeah, so they, they're, they're also directed. Um, so anyway, I, I would have to check for all of them, but I think it's all gonna be empty for all of them. Um, because if you think about the complement, uh, pre-order uh, graph, then all the compositions will exist. Yeah. So I, I claim this thing is empty. Um, okay, maybe that's home. Um, all right. So the free contra category can remove diodes, or they can remove these obstructions. Um, there are also cases where there aren't there. It's not possible to remove an obstruction. Um, so if you have a directed obstruction, like a star obstruction, like this, um, to all, so I have an obstruction to all things, um, then in the free country category, there, this is not getting it removed. Um, so it's a sort of interesting to the structure. All right. Okay, now, um, the important thing is, is this actually a free construction? And I, I think it is. Um, I wouldn't put my hand in the fire for it, but let me let me show you the heuristic argument. Um, so suppose I have an M in contra. Oh, let me use black here. Suppose I have a contra graph and um, a. Oh, I want to check the uh, contra graph. I want to check the universal property, right? So f of k in contra, uh, contra cat, and a map f of uh, contra graphs. That's forgetful. And now I want this to um, to commute. I want to, to construct a map like this. Um, J f two uh, k. Um, and how, to, how do we define this? Well, the JF is really two parts. So it is on the objects, it's just F. And then we need a JF hash. And this is going to be defined a little weird. It's going to be defined as follows. Um, so it goes from num. So for, for, for a, F, B, to um, A, B, so this is in J, M, this is in K, and all right, what, what is intuitively what's going to happen? Well, it, 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 it takes a guy here, and 
it sort of un unfolds it or unrolls it. And every unfolding, it's going to apply the, the F map, or the, sorry, the F, the F sharp map. All right, so I can say that, but let me just write it out. So it's going to be JF U of any initial segment or initial path is F sharp of U of S. All right. Alexander, are you going to be done in the next few minutes? Uh, yeah, how much time? Uh, if you just start wrapping up. Okay, well then this is the end. Um, uh, I guess what I would like is that the following is true and maybe something like it's true, which is, all right, so maybe claim, hope, dream, is, okay, let B be Boolean algebra. And then um, there are two sort of contra categories that I can build out of it. I can forget that it's a Boolean algebra and then take the dual. So if I have a graph, I just take the dual graph, right? That's operation. I don't know what that was bottom. And I take the free. Uh, contra category, and this has a map to the contra functor map to B, uh, sorry, to the stone dual of B. And I think they're very related, and they might even be equal. Um, right, so what does it mean? It means sort of that this construction, this categorical construction, is going to give you these ultra filters. Um, For Alexander. Yeah, question Have you David. Consider the um, there's a monodal category, monodal structure on set that sends A, B to A plus B plus A times B. There's a monoidal structure on set that sends sets A, B. The monodal product of A and B is uh -huh. A plus B plus A times B. That is A plus B plus A times C. B, B sorry. Yeah, plus a non exclusive all. So it's a non exclusive word. The monodal unit is still zero. Uh huh. Okay. And so that would say that you can a you can plus b plus a times b. Yeah. So this is a a tensors David. I don't know from Garner. Uh, All right. And then the monodal unit is okay. zero. And so you still have like unit. It still be kind of like the other one, except it would allow you to have as Brenda says like non-exclusive or you, your obstruction would either you'd either have an obstruction from. Mm. Y or from Y to Z or from right or both. So this is gonna give a non-exclusive order of structure. Okay. Um, thanks. Yeah, yeah that, that could be good. Uh, I, I, I kind of grew to like the exclusive order because ultra filters are yeah. this important and mysterious uh, creature. And yeah, I'm really interested in my model theory. But maybe this is good good stuff too. Thank you. Sure. Um, yeah. Uh, have you heard of these things called nategories, and if right. so, are they uh, related? Yes, um, so uh, Brandon asked if they're related with so-called nategories, nategories. Yes, they are very related. Um, so I've been interested in, from a proof theory angle, about, um, uh, well, you said a sort of co-cut rule I wrote up. I've um, uh, been very interested for more than a year in, in, in this kind of uh, mathematics. Uh, and it felt that there should be some sort of dual object, and I asked people around uh, at last ACT, um, and then I got stuck in a lecture I didn't want to be in, and that lecture was on nategories, and they had very similar ideas. So they had, um, or, but much more worked out, they had this idea that, that um, if you have a category that is endowed with some sort of negative information. Um, the way they set it up is, it's different from the decomposition story. They don't have a decomposition story, but there is a way in which you can see some of their stuff in, in this context. I prefer this setup because it's, it, it's, it's a more cleaner, more dual story. Um, uh, yeah, so Jay, Jay told me, just said, ah, well, what about enriching instead of 
that sort of was, was the start of this uh, of this uh, project. Yeah. Thank you. Do um, categories have a gene in which category store yet? And if so, is the relationship just whatever the puncture is between set off and so? Uh, and, and, and so I should say, NAP category combines category structure with a with something like a contract oh, category right. structure. They don't have an explicit decomposition. Um, that's also something I sort of playing around with, and I think that's sort of the future. Um, you know, that's sort of combining. So from a proof theory point of view, it would be combining proofs and uh, model theory mm -hmm. constructions. I think is interesting. Yeah. I think at the colloquium on we had on categories, mm -hmm. there was an enrichment story, but the person said that they prefer to define it without some of the equations that enrichment yeah, came with. Yeah. Um, so Brendan points out that um, apparently there is an enrichment story also for an active Right. Why don't we thank the speaker again?